So as promised, I'm going to go ahead and go through this linear programming worksheet and make a video of it. Now my first two periods, I tried to do this all by calculator and really it became more inefficient and confusing than anything else. All right, so starting off, the idea for linear programming, we've done all the fundamentals. We're totally prepared for this lesson, at least I believe. So the idea is that when you finally do graph your inequalities, which we've been practicing, and say, um, let's not do it like that. Say that your inequalities look something like that, and your shaded region is in here. Linear programming is going to have questions that ask something like this. How do you maximize daily income? Or how do you maximize weekly income? Sometimes there's a minimize. I'm seeing if there's a, yeah, right here. Okay. So right here is a minimum. How many pounds of each type should be purchased to satisfy the requirements at minimum cost? So sometimes you're trying to maximize in income. Sometimes you're trying to minimize costs. Um, when you graph this, these inequalities, and you do your shading, you're looking at the vertices, these four vertices. Now, the upper rightmost vertices are the ones that are concerning themselves with maximizing a function. Those will maximize a function. If you try to minimize a function, you want the left bottom most vertices. Okay? So, say for example, I've got a profit equation that says every bracelet I produce costs two dollars. Every every earring I produce, every set of earrings is three dollars, and that represents my total profit. So, depending on how many bracelets and earrings I sell makes my profit. If I want to maximize that profit, then I would try to plug in one of these uh, upper rightmost vertices. If I want to try and minimize, say it's a cost, say we're still talking bracelets, but say it's 50 cents to produce a bracelet and 60 cents to produce earrings, and I want to minimize cost, then I'm more concerned with these bottom leftmost. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually work some of these problems out, but that's a general scope of what linear programming is, very generally speaking. So here we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. Give me a second. Let's line all this stuff up. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm trying, but it doesn't look like I can get it much closer. All right. That might be as close as I'm going to get. That might. That's still too close. Okay, that, nah, whatever, that's going to be good enough. All right, so a manufacturer makes widgets and gadgets. At least 500 widgets and 700 gadgets are needed to meet minimum daily demands. Okay, so there are, it says right here, define variables. So let's call X the number of widgets and Y the number of gadgets. Next thing is I need to write constraints. Now what a constraint is, is it's just a limitation upon a situation. So that's what I'm going to, we practice writing inequalities. That's what inequalities are. So at least 500 widgets. I've placed a constraint on how few widgets I can actually produce. I need to make at least 500. So if X is the number of widgets, then one of my constraints looks like this. X has to at least be as big, if not bigger, than 500. I need at least 500 widgets. Also, I need at least 700 gadgets. So Y needs to exceed 700. Number of gadgets needs to exceed or equal 700. So again, at least 500 widgets and 700 gadgets are needed to meet minimum daily demands. Now, there's a maximum too. The machinery can produce no more than 1,200 widgets and 1,400 gadgets per day. So there's a maximum. X cannot exceed 1,200. The number of widgets I can produce cannot exceed 1,200. The number of gadgets I can produce cannot exceed 1,400. Why cannot exceed 1,400? The combined number of widgets and gadgets that the packing department can handle is 2,300 per day. That's another limitation. That is another 
That is another constraint. Okay? So together, if I combine the number of widgets and gadgets, I cannot handle more than 2300 per day. So I can go up to 2300, but I cannot exceed 2300. So there are three, four, five constraints. And then what is this? If the company sells widgets for 40 cents and each and gadgets for 50 cents each, how many of each should be produced to maximize daily income? We will get to this in a second. I'll go ahead and write this out as an equation. So it's 0.4 for every widget plus 0.5 for every gadget equals my total income. Or I'm just going to put a big uppercase P for my profit. <coughs> okay. So now my objective is graph the system of inequality. So here's my system. It's my set of inequalities, my system of inequalities that I'm going to go ahead and graph. And it looks like we're going all the way up to 2300. So I probably don't want to pick a scale that goes up by ones. I'm going to pick something that goes up by maybe 200s. 100s is a good idea. 100s, 200s. Again, you also don't want to go up by something like 500 because you want it to be pretty exact so you can find those vertices that I was talking about at the very beginning of this video. So this is the number of widgets. Oh, can't see that. There we go. Number of widgets. This is the number of gadgets. So widgets, gadgets, and I'm going up by 200. So 200, 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 2000, 2400. And then also I'm going to go up by 200s on the y-axis. 400, 8, 12, 16, 20, 2400. Okay, so I want to bring your attention to something else as well. Notice on this equation, they gave me the least number of widgets and gadgets that I can produce first. And the reason I wrote it like this in a, for a reason, okay? I did widgets, widgets, gadgets, gadgets, and it's for a teaching purpose. It doesn't matter how you write them down or what order as long as you have them all. But I want to show you that you don't actually need to shade all of this. You need to realize that this is a minimum and this is a maximum. This is the minimum number of widgets you can produce, while this is the maximum number of widgets that you can produce. Okay, so the number of widgets lies somewhere in between 500, which is your minimum, and 1,200, which is your maximum. So as far as shading is concerned, right, I'm shading somewhere in between these two lines. I'm not going to do that, so just realize that your solutions are going to lie somewhere in between these two lines. Next, I've got Y is exceeding 700. Y exceeds 700, but is fewer than 1,400. So again, my Y's lie somewhere between these two lines. And now you can see all my shading should be overlapping somewhere in this square right here. In between the X's, the minimum and the max, and between the Y's, minimum and max. That's where all my solutions reside. I've got one more to do real quick. I'm going to turn this light on right here. Oh, that didn't help much. Okay, one more to do. So I've got... X plus Y is less than or equal to 2300. I need to solve this and get Y by itself. Negative X starting at 2300. Okay, so negative X slope starting at 2300. So here's 2300. Then I'm going down one, right one, down one, right one. And because I'm going by two 200s, down one, right one looks like this. It's got that negative slope. And honestly, I've gone far enough already. So I'm just going to stop there, connect my dots. And this would continue, but uh, I'll just put an arrow there. Arrows showing that these lines go on forever, but doesn't really matter. What we're focused on is this. So we're, all of our shading was in this square. 
Now we got to shade also y is smaller than, so we're shading below this line where the smaller y's are at. So finally, I'm going to shade my final region of feasibility right here. And again, the shaded region is called the region of feasibility. It's where all my feasible answers reside. Okay, now I've got five vertices. One, two, three, four, five. My question, let's look at that question again. My question is saying, if a company sells widgets for 40 cents each and gadgets for 50 cents each, how many of each should be produced to maximize daily income? Again, if I'm trying to maximize something, that's going to be one of these two points upper rightmost points. If I'm trying to minimize, it's going to be the lower left. But in this case, it's upper rightmost. And I've got two that could possibly maximize my income. So this one, which is at 900 and 1400. So is it the point 900? Is it by producing 900 widgets and 1400 gadgets that I maximize my income? Or is it by producing 1200? and 1,100 gadgets, 1,200 widgets and 1,100 gadgets that will maximize my income. <coughs> so here's that equation that I made at the very beginning from this, 40 cents for each widget, 50 cents for each gadget, produce my maximum profit. So if I take these points right here and I plug them into this profit equation, one of these points is going to maximize my profit. So this one I got 0.4 times 900 plus 0.5 times 1400 equals my profit. So if that were the case, then I would get $1,060 for that production. Let's try this other one out. So I got 0.4 times 1200 plus 0.5 times 1100 equals my profit would be 1,030. So clearly this one makes the most money. So that is what we want to produce. So to answer the question finally, I would say something to the extent of by producing 900 widgets and 1,400 gadgets, uh, I will maximize my daily income given these constraints. So to put that simply, Given all these constraints that we started off with right here, <clears throat> we can't produce less than that, we can't produce more than that, can't produce less than that, can't produce more than that, combined, can't produce more than that. Given all those constriction, or constraints, producing 900 widgets and 1,400 gadgets will maximize my daily income. All right, now it's my objective just to set up more of these. So next, A, I'm sorry, uh, two. A company makes mo two models of light fixtures, A and B, each of which must be assembled and packed. That's a little bit of fore foreshadowing. Assembled and packed. The time required to assemble, model A is 12 minutes and model B is 18 minutes. The time it takes to pack, model A is one minute and model B is one, oh, I'm sorry, mo model A is two minutes and one minute to pack model B. Each week there are 240 hours available to assemble and 20 hours to pack. If model A sells for this much and model B sells for this much, how many of each model should be made to maximize weekly income? So again, I've got some constraints. My constraints in this situation are time. There's a maximum number amount of time that I can use to assemble. Well, A takes 12 minutes to assemble. So 12 minutes for every A that I assemble and 18 minutes for every B that I assemble. So 12 minutes for every A, 18 minutes for every B that I assemble. And that has a maximum of 
240 hours that I can actually do that. So this is in minutes right now. So if I'm going to take 240 hours, I need to convert that to minutes, which I think is 14,400. I think I remember that correctly from class. If not, then all I'm doing is multiplying 240 times 60. Next, I have a packing uh, inequality or constraint. So there's a limit, a maximum on the amount of time I can take to pack. So it takes two minutes to pack model A. So two minutes for every A that I pack. One minute to pack model B. So I can write one B or I just can write B by itself. Cannot exceed, I have 20 hours to pack. That's all the time I have. So that's my constraint there. So I cannot exceed 20 hours times 60 is 1,200 minutes. So those are my two constraints, and that's all I have in this case. And then my profit equation, or if you look back up here at these objectives, it says write the expression to be optimized. So what are we trying to optimize? What is our objective? Okay, our objective is to maximize weekly income. So A costs 150 when you sell it, plus 1.7 for every B when you sell that, equals my total profit and I'm trying to maximize that so again just to wrap our minds around something we're gonna have two equations here one's gonna be this one one's gonna be that and they're gonna intersect in one place so say it looks something like I'm just making something up but when we graph it looks something like that okay well there's my intersection point if I take that and plug it into this equation that's my only vertex that's going to be the maximum as far as profit is concerned. Okay, but those are my three three equations or two constraints and one profit equation to maximize. I'll go ahead and do <clears throat> one more, super difficult one, I think. Number 4. Okay. A diet is to include at least 140 milligrams of vitamin A and at least 145 milligrams of vitamin B. So here's my totals. I need a vitamin A equation and a vitamin B equation. These requirements will be obtained from two types of foods. Type X, so let's call type X the variable X. It contains 10 milligrams of vitamin A and 20 milligrams of vitamin B. And type Y contains 30 milligrams of vitamin A and 15 milligrams of vitamin B. Okay, and then there's a little bit of cost at the very end. And we're going to try to minimize cost. So, let's go ahead and set this up. My Vitamin A equation looks like X will give me 10 milligrams of vitamin A for every, for every, let's see, pound of X I have. So for every pound of X, I get 10 milligrams of vitamin A. Plus, what does Y get me? 30 milligrams of vitamin A for every pound of Y. And I need at least 140 milligrams. So here's my total. At least 140. So here's my vitamin A equation. I've got 10 milligrams from X, 30 milligrams from Y, and I need at least 140 milligrams. I need another constraint that is talking about vitamin B. So again, I need at least 145 vitamin B and a or X gives me 20, 20 milligrams from X, and B, or I'm sorry, Y gives me 15. So there's my two constraints. All right, and then the last thing, the thing I'm trying to minimize, if type X food costs $12 per pound and type Y costs $8 per pound, so $12 for X plus $8 for Y. How many pounds of each type should be produced or purchased to satisfy the requirements at minimum cost? So this is representing how much it costs. That's a cost equation. If I want to minimize, then I'm looking for the bottom leftmost vertices. Okay? So that is the concept, just the general overarching concept of linear programming. I hope this video was helpful and uh, 
If you have more questions, just ask me before class starts or uh, during tutoring time. But I'll definitely see you guys in class.